The Great and Lovely Descent. I'm in the Matrix. It's official. Man, that's it's beautiful actually. I <laughs> some very unique visuals here. I'm assuming this is done in the Source Engine, which is not known Let's for great visuals. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Okay. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. That's what I was just so talking about. So in other about. words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. <laughs> like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. The, the tools pool. available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. Well, I know that. I've played Half-Life, and Half-Life 2, and pretty much every other game on the Source engine. <laughs> Look at these pictures. Well, I don't know what that is. Well, it's a street, obviously. I don't know where it is, is what I meant to say. I like this carpet. It's kind of 70s, 60s. Oh, something just opened. Washroom. Oh, it's open too. Can I use the toilet? Nope. Sink. That's an interesting sink. Anything else? Should I go this way? I'm guessing I should. Uh... Okay. Oh boy. A jumping puzzle. Maybe. See, this... I'm not sure if you can rebind the keys of this game, but... Uh, did I just go the right way? I'm not even sure what I'm supposed to be going here. I'm on the mirror's edge. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm left-handed, and I'm not sure if he can rebind the keys, but... Oh, boy. Oh, maybe the point is not to... Well, I guess I didn't die anyway. Okay. What I was saying is I'm left-handed. I'm using WASD in the space bar, which is not the most optimal way for me to play. <laughs> so, if I seem a little weird, that's why. I'm not even sure you can rebind the keys. I'm not going to stop right now. I'm enjoying the experience. So, let's see where this takes us. Oh, there's like an invisible... Was I supposed to... So if I fell in there, I would... Oh, I can't fall in there. That's weird, though. Why is that wall there? I just heard something. I don't know what it is. I don't have a gun, though, so hopefully it's nothing violent. <laughs> wow. Alcatraz or something? Oi! Going up. And I can't go this way. <laughs> and I can't go that way either. Can I? Oh, wait. I'm going this way. Oh, I gotta... This prison... Funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. What? If you don't mind, I think we're going to skip that. Okay, good. I do not have... Oh, I'm going down. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable. Whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't.
All right, sorry, I don't know if you saw that cut, but I had to answer the phone very quickly. It was being very loud and annoying, so sorry about that. Continuing on. Where am I? So I guess I can't really go anywhere but down. That's what's happening here. Looks like it. Let's go down. outside. Again, very minimalistic design, but I like it. It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. You're tricking me? <laughs> There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Okay. Nah, just a few clouds. Alright, let's keep going. What else is down here? Listen, listen, listen. Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. You there! Did you come up from... You there! Did you come from up above? What was up there? Yes, there was a world stamped with whiteness. Yes, there was an enormous prison I spent hours in. Yes, there were these floating colored blocks. I'm going the whiteness. That's the world above. You've been there. Now, this is important. Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? Yes, I did. That was literally the last thing I did before coming here. Again, perfect. Now please tell us how you solved this. Tell us the solution. Tell us how to get to the other side. Trust me. You don't want to go over there. Oh no, but I do! We do! We need to get there! Do you understand? It is the most important thing in the world. We have to escape this prison. There must be an ending. I promise you, there is nothing. I want more. I might have said that wrong. <laughs> is that it? Oh, what's this? Can I... Oh, the door is open. Oh, this one's closed. No more talking? Okay. Let's go. What? Hello, how did you get here? Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? Yes, do you want to... No, I've been right here this entire time. I suggest you go and see the puzzle sometime. It's not meant to be solved, but you can sit in the black space in the middle. What happens if I solve it? Not sure, but if you have any suspicion... Huh? But if... If I have any... Okay. <laughs> Bad reading. Too slow. Alright. Wow. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Okay. What is down here? Looks like a street or something. It's 
It's a building. A courtyard. It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Wow. April 2009. This game is connected to the internet. As you walk around, you can leave notes. All the notes you see are left by other players. Wow. Well, guys, so far this has been an amazing experience, but I am running out of time, so I gotta say goodbye for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I'll be back next time with more. I can't wait to play more of this. Take care, guys. Have a great day.